name is Ken McClymont. I'm based in Greenock and my art form is painting. Fine art. Um, when I was at school, I found that I was good at drawing and painting and uh, it continued from there. And uh, when I left school, I knew that I wanted to go to art college. When I was about uh, 11, my grand took me to Amsterdam on a holiday. She took me around Europe on a bus. And I went to the Reich Museum and saw fantastic work, including The Night Watch by Rembrandt, which if you see when you're 11 years old, you remember. And I don't know what it was, but I just decided, not then, but later on in life, that that's what I wanted to do. The art process is work, really, and just to keep working away at what it is that I feel that's inside me that has to come out, really. It's not, um, I, I can't really explain what, because I go through phases of different things, but most of the abstract work is, is just really me and what I feel makes a good piece of art, which should be timeless and um, attractive or ugly. It should create uh, conflict in certain areas or it should be some people may find the conflict pleasing and that's really what my art is about. Emotions inspire the process and colours inspire the process. Um, looking at other works inspire the process. Music inspires the process a great deal. I listen to music here all the time when I'm working. Um, and that's that's basically most of what inspires me. It doesn't take much to inspire me to do anything really when it's when it comes to working and painting. Favorite part, which may sound crazy, but it's actually making the, the preparing the canvases <laughs> when they're pristine and just looking at this white space for as long as I have to before I start making marks on the canvas or the paper. It's just for my, when my imagination starts to take over um, and it can be a sound, it can be a colour which comes into my mind and I just, I just start doing it. It's, given the type of work, it may sound strange, but that's, that's what it is. Not especially, no. It, it, but if when working with different materials, you know, you need to know a bit about those materials and, and will they last? You know, if you buy cheap paint, it won't last as long as expensive paint. The colour will fade. Um, so you find that the, the colours in my work uh, will last for a long time because I know that if you don't prepare the canvas properly, if you don't prepare the surface properly, the colours are absorbed and taken out of the, the paint and um, it, it, you, it's not a good thing to do. Sometimes when I've, I've you know, been sort of penniless, not that I've ever been penniless, but you, you tended to buy cheaper materials and regret it because you may have produced a very good piece of work, which may be a good piece of work for three or four weeks. And then it turns out, it starts to fade, the colours mute and you just end up with something that you're not happy with. Um, well, the education helped a lot. I went to Dundee Art College at, at a very good time from 1977 to 82. So right through punk years um, and started getting into jazz music, punk music, blues music, every type of music, <laughs> which again helps me sort of form the ideas that I had about art. Um, and the training that I had was very figurative based and Dundee was very figurative so we had to learn to draw the figure, anatomy, um, a lot of still life painting, a lot of uh, figure painting um, and composition work uh, and that's sort of served, served me well throughout my, because I can turn my hand to do figurative work Should, if that's what I decide that's what I want to do and uh, I enjoy that, I enjoy the fact that I can paint like most people would call a painter, paint, you know, which is nice. 
Um, I don't think there's any great mystery about getting involved in painting at all. It's just, you can pick things up relatively easily these days from shops and just start doing it, you know, just to start looking at things. As I've said, I spend a lot of time just looking at a blank space and whatever just comes into my head, that's what I put down. And uh, in terms of the, um, the, te the techniques that have come through experimentation and time and looking at other works, other, other pieces of art that you like, or, you know, it's the, the galleries in Scotland are fantastic, even in uh, the Maclean galleries, fantastic, fantastic um, pieces of work in there. It's, you just go and, and be inspired by things and start doing something. Yes, it does. It's just, I like the big sky and um, I like, as I say, I like the McLean Museum and their regular basis looking at different what the objects that they have and the history of the area. And uh, I, you know, it's a great place for walking as, as well. It's like, I love walking down Lunderston, Lunderston Bay. I love walking there in the mornings. Yes, just to continue working for as long as humanly possible and uh, to hopefully uh, just to have a bigger audience that looks at my work and either appreciates it or doesn't appreciate it. You know, I think the thing about art and especially fine art is that people, there's a, there's a huge amount of variety of work there and not one thing is for everyone and just to continue making the pieces that I, I personally am happy with whether they be abstract or, or figurative because people call this abstract. I don't call it abstract. So, <laughs> a painting, art, that's what I call it. When you start a piece, you, you, you start a conversation with it and it tells you, don't touch me anymore. Finished, which may sound but again, it's like a piece of music, you know. Music has a, a, a beginning, a middle, and an end, you know. And there's it, it, things like that just work, or they don't work, you know. And that's how I like to see my work. It's like hopefully a piece of two-dimensional music that people can look at for a long time and see different things, in, because that's what what inspired me to paint in the first instance was the fact that you can look at a painting for as long as you know and that's what to me makes good art you know it's, it's something that is going to hold your interest for a long 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 time and you will see things in it that you have not seen before even though you may have looked at the same piece for years and that's why you keep looking at looking at old paintings you know like Turner or Matisse, you, 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 you keep seeing different things within them which has come from the artist and it's just to try and continue that process. Uh, well I think as, as a painter you always feel a bit alone so any sort of lockdown issues weren't really an issue because we, we're used to working solitary you know um, and that's so we know that a lot of people suffered badly from isolation, but I think most artists that you talk to here would say, no, it's fine. They didn't quite like, quite like the isolation, but it's nice when, it's lovely working here because we have a nice community of people and we talk to each other, occasionally have coffee together and stuff like that. So it's, it's a nice environment. Yes, definitely, because when I, well, as a, as a result of going to art college, I get involved with drama. So I also worked as a theatre director and designer. And um, that came about through working, because I was a secondary subject, I had to do a secondary subject all the time. And I went into theatre design, and then I did a tiny bit of acting, which I was, <laughs> I was decided to stop. Uh, I lived in London for a long while and I ran a theatre 
and at the same time as running the thieves in the office I had a desk set up when I used to paint without telling my bosses because it was in a different building <laughs> so I was be, I'd be painting at the same time as trying to read scripts and send to a meeting with companies and saying oh, what's that on the table and it'd be my, my art I used to do a lot of collages and stuff like that stuff where I didn't have to make too much of a mess but it's just it's, if you feel that you got to create something and the, the theatre's a, a good different thing because it's very collaborative and so you're working with a big team of people a lot of the time and um, I worked in new plays a lot of the time so not a lot of plays people know about but I think that again there were sort of pieces of, of art or sort of individual voices and uh, a, a language of their own you know and this is what we're trying to do here is create a language that people uh, an international language that people understand you know that, that people get something from or don't get something from you know it's not it doesn't upset me people don't like the work but if they like it then fantastic